This is a Good Times Entertainment promo video or compilation video or just a mess of a video. This is Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Friends. Three ants in that title. Beautiful like beauty. <laughs> So, how do you make a Good Times cartoon even cheaper? You chop several of them up, throw in some public domain garbage, and shove them all onto one VHS tape. Seeing a release of Blank and Friends usually signified a pretty crappy video with some public domain stuff on it or something. You'd also see this a lot with cheap Looney Tunes re-releases, like these Bugs Bunny and Friends and Daffy Duck and Friends tapes by United Kids Video. Oh, also there's this Tweety and Friends that was put out by none other than Good Times themselves. There is also this Bugs Bunny and Friends tape by Kids Classics, which you might remember was actually just a division of Good Times. The obvious exception for a crappy blank and Friends is Garfield and Friends, but that was the actual title of that show. And still, a lot of the time I could have done without the end friends there too. I was there for Garfield. Good Times did quite a few whatever end friends VHS releases, some with more old public domain cartoons like Rudolph and Friends. With the most Bambi looking Rudolph I've ever seen, which even includes Christmas Thumper and, oh no. Stompy Christmas Whoosh! The Rudolph actually featured on this tape, by the way, is the 1948 Max Fleischer one. So it's not like you were actually getting any kind of fun Dingo Pictures Goldie style ripoff of Bambi here, besides with the cover. Now, other Good Times and Friends VHS releases had condensed versions of the Jetlag and Golden Films cartoons we more commonly associate with the Good Times brand. And wow, with Cinderella and Friends, you even got a free watch! i just completely lose my mind if I ever got a free Good Times watch. Ah, oh, crap. These tapes came in 30 and 60 minute varieties. The half hour ones sometimes only featured one actual cut up Good Times cartoon along with two public domain shorts. Though, if they are feeling generous, you might get two short versions of the Good Times cash-in tunes and only have to be bored by one public domain short. This Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Friends tape is a Good Times release that I rather appropriately picked up at a Goodwill, and it was extra discounted, which is why there is a yellow sticker on the back, so I think I only paid 50 cents. I still overpaid. This and 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 tape is confusingly labeled as a double two feature even though there are six cartoons on it. The reason they are calling it that though is because this tape is a combo of their Beauty and the Beast and Friends and their Aladdin and Friends tape. Also, I have no idea why they put some holly plant on theirs. This tape has nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever. And if this cassette ever had a real top label at one point, I guess it fell off, so it's got a lovely tape label on it. Adding to the doubleness of this double feature, Good Times also had at least two different releases of Beauty and the Beast and Friends and Aladdin and Friends. The first Beauty and the Beast and Friends release coming out in 1994, and then due to popular demand, this completely useless tape was re-released in 1999. This Aladdin and Friends, which is the same as the one that's on my tape, came out in 94. But this other one from 93 that came out with the kids' classics branding isn't the same tape and seems to be just public domain cartoons. This double drip tape that I have came out in 1998. So Good Times apparently thought you were getting too much with this tape when they did the 1999 re-release that took the and Aladdin and his friends off of it. Good Times did do some actual legit double feature releases of some of their cartoons that weren't bastardized like these and Friends releases, which I guess is slightly more worthwhile. But that doesn't give me as much to blab on about like this. This is the Platinum series though, so be prepared to be blown away by the quality. This is how the story of Aladdin all began. Long ago, in an ancient city, 
there lived a young boy named Aladdin. I just want to watch the bad cartoon. I don't need some asshat speeding things up with garbage narration. Although he was poor, there was a certain magic to him, a fact that did not go unnoticed by the old medicine woman Fatima and her visitor, Haseem. Great sound balance, guys. It's wonderful Good Times Entertainment can even speed their movies up competently without having two voices fighting for control of your ears. You will not forget our bargain. A half share of the fortune he brings me. So it was important for us to hear Jafart and Fatima having a chit chat about getting rich, but it wasn't important to let us know who Aladdin was at all before throwing him into the cave of blunders. Good job, good times. Hasim came to take Aladdin on a journey he would never forget, to reveal an entrance to a cavern filled with riches, a cavern that only Aladdin could enter. Why? Don't ask me. I'm not following the story that closely. You might have warned me the stairs were slippery! How was I supposed to know? I guess it's good that one of the Good Times movies on here is one of the few that can actually get you to laugh along with it at times. Though you are losing a lot of it along with its jokes that actually work and completely destroying the pace on this tape. So, actually, it's terrible that this is on here. And it's still weird that the aquarium movement from Carnival of the Animals by Camille Saint-Saëns is used here. It is pronounced Saint-Saëns. Faint, faint. Camille, huh, ridiculous. The Carnival of the Animals by Camille Saint-Saëns. Yeah, Looney Tunes came back into this, but you didn't expect that. If there's a classic fairy tale movie I more often associate with this piece of music, it's Beauty and the Beast. Even though the Disney version of that movie didn't actually use this music, however, Alan Menken has stated that his prologue music was inspired by Aquarium. Also, notably, this version cuts the whole weird field and sky inside the Cave of Blunders bit. Bring it up to me! I think I'll just wait until you're gone, and then I'll come up. <laughs> kind of funny, this cut removes any of Jafar's plans to betray Aladdin originally, so Aladdin comes off more like the jerkass who wants to betray Jafar just to get the treasure all for himself. Very well. Boy, let the cavern be closed for all time! Lock the door! It is I, oh, master. Do I really want to see this? No. No, you don't. The end. What can I do for you? I would prefer not to live the rest of my life. Okay. <laughs> The Sultan of the Kingdom was bringing his daughter to the bathhouse and forbade anyone to look upon her. He didn't want them to know she had jaundice. Aladdin was determined to see the beautiful daughter of the Sultan. Aladdin sure did have a death wish. Okay. Upon seeing Princess Layla, Aladdin was determined that one day he would marry her. Who cares if that's what she wants? Aladdin ain't some woke feminist, you know. Uh, are we expecting a visiting king? As you requested, Sultan. I didn't request shit. Get the hell out of here. And so Aladdin and Princess Layla were married with the Sultan's blessing. This bit was kind of weird in the original version, too, as a narrator came in there as well, but it sounded like the genie. And so Aladdin and Princess Layla were married with the Sultan's blessing. As a wedding gift, Aladdin had the genie of the lamp build them a palace. As a wedding gift, Aladdin had the genie of the lamp build them a palace. So they replaced the narration with other narration saying the same thing. So the boy discovered the secret of the lamp, did he? Cheated me out of my fortune is what he did. He's not wrong. If you remove Jafar's evil intentions like they have here, Aladdin is just a con man who screwed over Jafar. I am your new master, and you will obey me. Okay. Stop. 
still the best part of the movie. You will move Aladdin's palace. Aladdin, out to find Princess Layla in the magic lamp, at last found the palace the evil magician Hasim had stolen from him. That was a harrowing ten seconds there. Creepy as shit. And so, the genie happily brought the palace back to the Sultan's kingdom. Aladdin! I'll get him! Aladdin and Princess Layla found happiness at last. Wow, they chopped out a lot there. Jafar killing Fatima and then dressing up as her, and the whole final battle with Jafar's death. Now it's just, oh, the palace got moved again? Bye! He sailed upon the ocean blue and Sinbad was his name. Wait, Sinbad was on this, plus there was a genie? Does that mean this is the long lost and very real Shazam movie? Long ago, there lived a brave adventurer named Sinbad. What? Turn the music down, dude! Sinbad had a giant S on his ship. What a shithead. Don't worry, Habib. Your seasickness will pass. The question is, if it shall pass before I pass on from this world. No matter. I've made the right decision. This voyage will increase my fortune a hundredfold. Yes, I've decided I don't care how sick you get. I'm gonna be rich. And so Sinbad and his trusted servant Habib went ashore to seek treasures yet undiscovered. Right, so, so far I've gotten that Sinbad is an ass on a boat who wants to be rich, and then he goes on an island looking to be rich. Our king will want to meet you. And so Sinbad went to see the king of Salabat. He was entertained by the royal swordsman. Sinbad loves death. Good show, man. Would you do this, old man of favor? So long as it is in my power, I shall do it. I ask that you marry my daughter. Thinking of jumping, master? Not to put thoughts in your head or anything, but you could, you know. We'd all be glad. I promised the king I would do anything, so long as it is within my power. But it is not within my power to marry his goat-faced daughter if I am not on this island. Sinbad sucks. He always sucks. Remember that dumb Sinbad show that used to be on and you'd always wish it was Xena or even Hercules on instead? So far from this, we've learned that Sinbad cares for money over his supposed friend's health, and he'll go to great lengths to break his word if it involves having to marry an ugly girl. Unaware <laughs> that Sinbad and Habib were hiding in the crates, the king's guards loaded them onto the boats. What? A simple merchant outwitting the captain of the guard? Addle-brained sheep. I'm sure it's supposed to be addle-brained sheep, but all I hear is asshole-brained sheep. Battle-brained sheep. Her tears will be nothing compared to the river Sinbad will cry when I get my hands on him. And we're supposed to hope that doesn't happen to Sinbad. Why? Ships approaching from our stern! The only thing I ask is that you don't punish Captain Aziz and his crew. Wow, they seriously didn't even show any kind of fight. Sinbad just immediately failed. Mm, that seems about right. I shall leave you on the island. It shall be the island, not I, who takes your lives. What do you suppose he meant by saying the island will take our lives? I'm not sure, Habib. It was a curious comment. So Sinbad is greedy, uncaring, a liar, a jerk, and extremely thick. Sinbad's greed almost gets them killed again as he leads them down a gold trail right to a stupid diaped up idiot Cyclops. He grabbed both Sinbad and Habib and returned to his lair. We shall surely perish in this place. There is always hope so long as men of courage stand together. Now if we can only find some men of courage, we'll be set. Anyway, they never find any men of courage and they die, I think. And then following the greed theme, we get Greedy Humpty Dumpty. This is the stunningly stupid 1936 short directed by Dave Fleischer, the younger brother of Max Fleischer. I'm Humpty Dumpty, king of wealth. Ugh, look at his gross mouth. What is appealing about this cartoon? Ah. <laughs> Oh, you stupid egg shit. I hate him already. Cholesterol ridden filth. Hold in these pieces of gold. I never had enough. Someday you go on the floor. Look out. Look out. What a stupid world to live in. Ha 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 ha. 
Did Humpty Dumpty put the money inside of himself? Does he have to shit coins back out to pay for stuff? <laughs> Oh, that Humpty Dumpty's a real bad egg, but you see, if he was a duck doing this, he'd be a good guy. Oh, no. <laughs> Why didn't I know there was gold in the sun? You know, I always thought Humpty Dumpty and Icarus had a lot in common. There's gold in the sun! Build my wall to reach the sun! The higher you go! The harder you fall! <laughs> if you value your lives, do as I did! Oh no, an egg with a whip! How can we ever stop him? <laughs> Pelicans can be used to mix cement. Come on, little friend, make a wisecrack. It's a living. That sort of thing. Oopsie. Naturally, this rotten egg can get to the sun without leaving the Earth's atmosphere. I don't believe this cartoon is very realistic at all. <laughs> you know, I always thought an electrical being lived in the sun and would come out and spank you if you tried to axe it. Anyway, hurry up and die, you gross egg hole. I guess at least Humpty Dumpty deserved it in this version. Way to go, 30s. The building is the well, I've got absolutely nothing to say at all about this one. Let's move on to the next thing. Next up is Three Musketeers. Now, you're not going to believe it with this one. All right, all right, we'll go back to the old man show. There lived a rich merchant who had three daughters. The two oldest were always complaining. The youngest, however, who was called Beauty, was gentle and kind as well as beautiful. Yeah, I tell you, that is the dead inside look of someone who truly has it all. One day, the merchant discovered he had lost every one of his possessions. You know, this is making good times feel a lot like Bevanfield tell me a story. This can't be. Are you saying we've lost everything? Why am I so happy about that? He was left with nothing. I mean, besides his family, but yeah, that's about as good as nothing. He was off to well, see if any of his fortune remained on this one days. last ship. I think the narrator's trying to speed us up, but good luck hearing her over my bullshit! He discovered that the ship and its cargo was ruined in a storm. My spices! They're ruined! He was forced to return home. Oh man, they cut old man's best line. All of this is still of perfect use. We can just dry it out. While riding home, he stumbled upon a castle in the woods. It was the castle of awkward music changes. Tired from his journey, he entered the castle and called for its master. Hello? Is this part really essential? Why are you lingering here? Oh my, perhaps I am and always have been the true hero of this story. When he yeah, came upon a rose bush. Bring a lovely rose. You dare to steal what I love most in the world? Your food? What? No! The flowers, man! Oh, I didn't realize those were supposed to be important at all. You could put a gate up or something at least then. Yeah, probably. You may go home and ask Beauty if she will die in your place. All right. Hey, Beauty, you want to die in my place? Uh, I guess. Works for me! I'll tell you about the terrible beast I met. He must have been looking in a mirror. So you have come. Have you made this trip of your own free will? What? 
No, you forced me to do this. Yeah, bad choice of words. I am grateful you have allowed me to take my father's place so his life might be spared. I see now why you named her beauty. It was not for her face alone. Well, oh, yeah, I totally knew what kind of person she'd grow up to be as a baby. Beauty watched as her father rode off, knowing she might never see him again. So these were tears of joy. Poor creature. How oh, he must suffer looking as he does. I need to pull a Sinbad and escape in some cargo. Did you enjoy your meal, Beauty? But why do you never eat? And Beauty began to see the kindness Beauty hidden beneath the beast's does. ugliness. I am. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut Beauty off. She says nothing of worth. Aren't you afraid to be in the arms of a monster like me? I would rather be in the arms of a beast whose heart is good than in those of a handsome man who is evil. And though Beauty was happy in her new home. Wow, this narrator is a real jerk to Beauty. I can't imagine a commentator being mean to that stupid airhead. Then let me visit my father. You do not know what you ask. He is the true beast and his stupid catchphrases will overshadow us all! Beauty awoke and she knew she was home. Well, she didn't actually sound that sure of where she was. I'm home! I, I must be home. That's right! There was slight uncertainty! Take that! What an epic fail! That proves that this is the worst movie ever! Someone play a ding sound effect! As the day to leave came, well, she did not have the courage to say goodbye. Say. Yeah, we've completely cut out the evil sisters and evil fairy plot. Why anything is happening, who knows? Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a prince in a castle. But he turned into a beast for undisclosed reasons. She ran to the terrace, where she found the beast. Weakened don't be dead. and near death. Please don't be dead. I've got one last thing to say to you. <laughs> you truly are your father's daughter. I need to get away from you. I die happily. No! You can't be dead! Oh, they put in the real ending at least. There's one point for the crappy version. Once upon a time, there lived a young man named D'Artagnan. You are my friends! Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, of course. Then who, pray tell, might you be? I'm D'Artagnan! Oh, imagine Cam Clark voicing D'Artagnan. That wouldn't happen. You shall deal with me first and leave the boy alone. D'Artagnan continued his journey to France, swearing he would get revenge. I honor to defend! D'Artagnan arrived at the king's palace unaware that there was great trouble in the kingdom. What? It's him. I have a score to settle. In his haste for revenge, D'Artagnan got into a scuffle with three of the king's top musketeers. Yeah, the poor D'Artagnan was just being a jerk to people to try and hastily get revenge. Who each challenged D'Artagnan to a duel. And you musketeers aren't even dressed. Ah, sacred blue. We are French. All we need do is prove to his majesty that the queen no longer has them. I have a perfect way to force the queen into admitting she has given the diamonds away. I will ask her to say it. I have given the diamonds away! Victory! D'Artagnan displayed his speed and grace at sword fighting. The soldiers loyal to Cardinal Richelieu appeared. Four against six, Porthos! What a clever boy. By fighting our enemy, he has made us his friends. Speak for yourself. I still don't like him. You cannot think I want my own wife to be beheaded. It's your fault if I behead you, not mine! The king is not a man. It's true. And so they returned to France to try and save the queen's life and free the kingdom from Cardinal Richelieu. Unfortunately, the queen was already dead inside before her beheading, so it wouldn't be much fun anymore anyway. The diamonds, my god! Once again, my brave musketeers have shown their worth. Not quite, your majesty. You're right, behead them. 
Last and least on the tape is A Coach for Cinderella, another old short from 1936. This is actually a great twist on Cinderella because it's an advertisement cartoon for Chevrolet. Yes, really. This is a slightly edited version of this cartoon, though, as the original version stated on the title card, Chevrolet Motor Division and General Motors Sales Corporation presents A Coach for Cinderella. The one on this tape just changes it to Jameson Handy Presents. <laughs> Her putting makeup on is funny cause she's ugly and she always will be. That's it, I'm buying a Chevy right now. Cinderella! Ugh, Cinderella's some kind of teleporting demon. <laughs> Who the hell is this jerk ass gnome? Get the hell out of their house. Who invited you? Ah, beatings. I need a Chevy. <laughs> oh shit, shit, Dorella's gone hyper realistic. She stayed as a hyper realistic for 6.66 .66 seconds. Evil number. Ah, creepy like a pasta. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, foot fetish gnome! Uh, I guess he lives over in Smurf Village. Who is our old? Cinderella! Now listen, man. She needs us now. The prince has asked her to his ball. Ew! Why does he sound like that? I want a Honda now. Are you with me, man? Yes! No! I suppose you've heard about that huzzy Mrs. Webb Spider. No, but I'm listening. Well, far be it for me to gossip. Oh, uh, yeah. Gossiping spiders. The 30s were a simple, stupid time. The gnomes enslave a bunch of creatures to work for Cinderella, so apparently committing multiple wrongs makes a right. Truly some horrifying stuff going on here, especially like these caterpillars who are forced to be the wheels. Like a caterpillar, oh, like a caterpillar. He just murdered a turtle for the roof. These gnomes are monsters. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! He has a drinking problem! Good times! Anyway, more creatures are forced to become components for the vehicle and the dress. Cinderella's path to the ball will be paved in blood. They then put their vehicular slaughter mobile into the modernizer, which of course turns it into a Ford. <laughs> That wasn't an edit by me, by the way. That's seriously how it plays on the tape. Similar edits were actually done on a lot of releases of this cartoon, and all are rather awkward. <laughs> This is, of course, removing the more blatant Chevy advert bit at the end. The coach for Cinderella, the coach for Cinderella. Even the original one ends a bit abruptly, but that's because they kept you waiting a year for the sequel, A Ride for Cinderella, to see Cinderella actually riding around in her Chevy to the ball. What a super pointless thing this was. But I really need to tell you all that. I don't like this movie. Doesn't do friendly. This movie is so fake. The toy is gonna break Fainers don't let me down You need to be around, bro
got that chocolate pizza I even like it cause I want Failus so failus Bring a mortar comedy Failus so failus An animation movie Failus so failus What we really is so fun Failus so failus What's your opinion about? But I really need to tell you all that I wasn't really going to finish this sentence with anything meaningful. Oh, not again. Anyone got the time? Ah, yes, it's 12.01, the perfect time for a time loop.